Sorry I paused there for a sec here, but I'm sort of... I really enjoy this film, but it's like, how do I review this when I'm in the middle of this Adam Sandler film where I've just been reviewing comedies, and then you get to this... There's some funny bits, but it's definitely more of a romance drama called Punch Drunk Love by Paul Thomas Anderson, who did Magnolia, which I've never seen, I've heard of, and Booty Nights, which I haven't seen in a long time. And I remember Burt Reynolds being good. May he rest in peace. And I remember Marky Mark singing The Touch from the Transformers soundtrack. But this, I enjoyed this when I first saw it back in the day, and watching it again, I still really enjoy this. To me, this shows Adam Sandler can act. I know some people were telling me, Matt, you can't call it an Adam Sandler film. It's a Paul Thomas Anderson film. But even Paul Thomas Anderson himself said, it's an art house Adam Sandler film. That's how he called it. And apparently Paul Thomas Anderson, he writes, at least at the time here, he liked Adam Sandler movies. You know, if it was a lonely Saturday night, he would watch them because they would cheer him up. And that's why he wanted to do and work with Adam Sandler after Magnolia. He wanted to do something different. And he liked the guy. And, you know, he gave Adam Sandler one of his best performances. I would say perform... No, Graham, movie-wise, my favorite is Happy Gilmore. Performance-wise, this is definitely one of his best, maybe his best. He does a fantastic job, and it'd be nice to see him do these kind of roles more, but the thing is, when he does these kind of movies, they bomb humongously. Rain Over Me was a huge bomb as well. This did not make any money. Rain Over Me, which I liked, that didn't make any money. Then you have The Cobbler, which I did see. I honestly was not much of a fan of that one. I thought it was just kind of... An interesting idea, but the stuff it was leading to, I'm like, really? I don't know. I'll get to that, maybe. I don't know. I just wasn't big on it. But this, I mean, it even has the song from Popeye that Shelley Duvall, He Needs Me. And he used it very well, the director. I mean, it's a beautiful looking movie. You have some really gorgeous looking shots. You know, it's like the way that the usage of colors, you can tell that this is a, a good piece of filmmaking. He pulls off a very solid role. It's wonderful performance by Adam Sandler, who plays this guy who you can tell he's lonely, he's inward sort of on guard. He has, I think it was like seven, like these dominating bitchy sisters that you, you just tell that throughout the years have pummeled him to some type of submission. And then once in a blue moon, he just lashes out in anger, which I can't blame the guy because these sisters are just bitches. And even from the beginning where he's in this on he's at this desk in this corner of what looked like an empty room and he walks outside and then then good looking shots where he's you know sees his car flip over and this piano I think it's more uh, harmonium, I think that's what you call it, is dropped off. And it's like, what is that? Like what and he's sort of like almost scared of the world in a way socially awkward he works with this company started off with deals with uh, like plungers Luis Guzman is in the film he's one of the guys who works there and you know just this calls from these sisters that are just fucking bitchy and they keep calling him, come to this party. Come, to, You don't come to this party, right? And one sister, he's like, no, I, I'm chatting with a customer. She's like, chat? Oh, you're doing a chat? Really? Chat? You're using the word chat? Not talk? Just so bitchy, dominant. Like, not one of these sisters is good. Is a good person. 
and they kind of just pretty much put a fucking leash on them and make them go to parties they doesn't want to go to and understandably enough he gets this bounce of anger like when he just at this party with these women just treat him like shit he just fucks up the glass of the windows you know he tries to talk to someone he talks about hey you're a doctor can you help me sometimes I cry for I cry a lot for no reason and like guys like uh, well I'm a dentist I can't really do anything about that and you just really feel sorry for this guy you really really feel sorry and he tossed himself he's like just tell me talk to me what am I looking for and this guy is so lonely he calls a sex hotline not to jerk off but just to talk to someone and he tosses his lady of course that you find out that's a bad idea because lady is this bitch that's trying to extort money from him and her boss is Philip Seymour Hoffman may he rest in peace which he has a couple of good scenes in it and this film I forgot how short this film was I guess because uh, I had not seen this film in a while my like Paul Thomas Anderson probably like two hours or maybe a little over two hours no it's an hour and a half especially if you take off the end credits if you take off the end credits, it's like an hour and 26, 27. Like it's not that long a movie, which surprised me, but it worked well for this. And you have this sort of interesting little subplot where he, he exploits this gaff that these this company made with freaking flyer miles. Like if you get this much, you get a shitload of frequent flyer miles. But there's this pudding, four for a dollar, and he buys all this fucking pudding and exploits it so he can get like, you know what? If I if I pay like three thousand dollars, I could get like a million miles. And apparently that's based on something that really happened. Like someone really did exploit this gap that a company had, so that he only had to pay three thousand bucks, but he got like a million miles, which means he could fly anywhere for the rest of his life. So that's the thing. This is definitely a unique, almost quirky kind of movie. Like even the music, the soundtrack is not a typical soundtrack. Sometimes it's almost as if it's sound effects trying to be music. It just it's not, definitely not a typical soundtrack. And again, this is a guy who's just crawled in a very different kind of role for Adam Sandler. Just sort of closed in, you know. But then this woman, not Emma Watson, but that's a different person, but Emily Watson, she comes in, she does a wonderful job too. And these two characters, like two peas in a pod, you tell they're just meant for each other because she's sort of a quiet person too. And you find out she wanted to meet Adam Sandler on her own. And like, she's with one of Adam Sandler's sister. And whenever this character is with one of the sisters he's very nervous but then with Emily Watson around he comes out of his shell and that's really what is like a story about a person coming out of their shell finding love becomes a very sweet love story And it was also, in a way, sort of fun when he gets these bits of anger and rage. Because he's such a almost introvert that you almost feel good when, like, uh, they're at dinner, these two characters, and she tells something that the sister told her, and Adam Sandler doesn't like it. It doesn't get mad at her, because it's not Emily Watts' fault, but he goes to a bathroom, he just destroys the bathroom, smashes it. And then when he comes out, he gets called by the restaurant guys like, did you destroy that bathroom? No. Oh, who did? I don't know. <laughs> you need to leave. I need, I need to leave. I need you to leave, sir. I didn't do anything. I was sort of that 
almost makes you wonder what Adam Sandler going to do. Uh, but he doesn't hurt anybody unless they deserve it. So he keeps with him being a likable character. And just, again, some really nice pieces of filmmaking, like the cinematography, the like the colors that Adam Sandler, who wears this suit, and Emily Watson, like the going walking down, one's wearing blue, one was wearing red. They could like, tell there was a lot of thought put in this, because he was also the writer as well as the director. And some fun bits of dialogue, like when he doesn't kiss the girl, but just says bye-bye. And she's like, bye-bye, and closes the door. And then Arab Sandler, he tells he's pissed himself. And he's like, and bye-bye, you fucking, and bye-bye, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> uh, but she calls back, and then, hey, you know what, you know, when you close that, when I close that door there, I actually wanted to kiss you. But I didn't know if I should, because it was too nervous. They go back and kiss, and then she goes to Hawaii. He follows, and they fall more in love. My only one issue, I wish he got more. I wish he was able to throw more retribution, or I guess more of a comeuppance against the sisters for being so bitchy. On the flip side, there is a, a good moment where he's in Hawaii, and he wants to find out where Emily Watson's at. And he's on the phone with one of the sisters, like, you give me the fucking number, you fucking hear me? You stop fucking treating me this way. You fucking give me that number and I'll fucking kill you. So, at least there's that. At least there's something and not nothing. And he's he coming more out of his shell. When he gets home with her, these assholes hit the car and hurt her. As people sit by fellow Seymour Hoffman because of that extortion thing. And I am saying I was just a badass. Just a tire iron. Just fucks these guys up. Fucks this guy up. Fucks this guy up. Fucks this guy up. Breaks the fucking truck. She's a badass. And when she takes to the hospital, he's still more pissed and he calls, finds the girl who's on the phone set, says, like, I want to talk to your supervisor. And then him and Phil Seymour Hoffman have a nice back and forth where Sam's like, you go fuck yourself. And then Phil Seymour's like, oh, fuck myself? No, you shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. And then Adam Sandler flies over and fucking, you tell me that's that before I beat the hell from you. Which I like that line. I I don't know if I've ever heard a line like that. Usually it's beat the shit out of you, beat the fuck out of you, or beat the hell out of you. But I really like that, like beat the hell from you. I don't know, it's, it's, it's not much of a difference, but I just like the way it sounds. Before I beat the hell from you. I don't know. It's like love in my life makes me stronger than anything you can imagine. And steers the shit out of Philip Seymour Hoffman. And then he tries to have the last word. And Adam says, like, what did I fucking tell you? Okay, that's that. So he steers the shit out of the guy. And it ends sweet. They fall in love. Everything's fine. It doesn't outstay its welcome. That's why I like how short it was. Award-wise, Absol did get nominated for a Golden Globe. I don't think this did anything with the Oscars. But seeing Adam Sandler as this is kind of like seeing Jim Carrey in Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind, which is another movie I enjoy. Now, granted, Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind definitely has a lot more creative images just because of the, the base, what the story is. So there's a lot of very creative things within the mind. I mean, if you've seen that movie, you know what I'm talking about. But I'm just saying they're two movies of comedians where they're really sweet love stories. And granted, Eternal Sunshine is definitely more creative. So maybe put that above this. But you know, it really shows that the comedians can do dramatic work. That they can do serious work. And they can do, you know what? 
a love story and be believable in it. And that's what Adam Sandler did with this. And yeah, like I, I know I repeat myself, it would be nice to see him do more of these movies, but they don't make money. They were huge flops. And he's, you know, I kind of get it where he's got a wife, he's got kids. And it's like, well, a lot of, you know, it's cool that the credits liked it, but a lot of people, I have a feeling, I would say, I, I would guess 80% of the people that come up to him talk about his comedies. And, you know, I kind of look at his point of view, okay, these films are not hits, no one is going to see them. Like, they, very, very little, bud, you know, box office. When I do this, no one goes to see them. Not many people will talk about like when was the last time someone brought this movie up? You think about it. So that's probably why he still does comedies. Granted, that doesn't mean those comedies should be so shitty nowadays. But even then, you know, I saw the cobbler and I thought that was kind of eh, definitely the weakest of the serious stuff he did. But yeah, I don't know if I'll review it, but uh, I, I didn't care for the cobbler. I know some people did. But I much prefer Rain Over Me and this movie. Like this. And again, like, you put the Shelley Duvall song from Popeye, I thought that was an interesting idea. It pops up in, like, one or two instances. I know it does at the end credits. And it does one time during the movie, but I forgot where. <coughs> but yeah, just a good film. It's a good movie. Even if you hate Adam Sandler... I would still suggest checking this out and giving this a shot. Because there's probably a few people who would be like, I don't like Adam Sandler, but I like this movie. I've heard that quite a bit. And I'm a, I am an Adam Sandler fan, and this is a... This was... I think maybe at the time people thought, oh man, it's going to be a new career end of this. But again, <clears throat> this movie did nothing. It did absolutely nothing when it came out. It got some, again, critical notices, but it's not like Adam Sandler won any awards from it, and, yeah, not, I mean, I'm, I'm looking up how much money did this movie not make. Because, again, it did not do that well, which is too bad. Maybe if this was a bigger hit, then it, it would prompt him to do this more. But it cost 25 million and it made 24 million. Let's see, is that 24 million in the US or 24 million worldwide? And sadly, there's not much features on There's no features on this, which I don't know, maybe there is a special edition of this. I think there's a criterion. Could be wrong on that. Um, I don't know if that has many features. But looking for the box office, 17 million in the U.S. and then 6.8 million foreign for 24 million worldwide. So that's not even U.S. It's worldwide. But again, it did do well with critics. Yeah, the only award I'm selling one was D Dion. International Film Festival. And he was nominated for Best Actor of Golden Globe. Nothing for Oscars, which I'm surprised. This was nominated for zero Oscars nominations. That's and that's surprising. <coughs> but fuck. Nowadays they want to nominate Black Panther for Best Picture. So I shouldn't be surprised. Or an Infinity War for Best Picture. Give me a fucking break. But yeah. Either way, I think if you haven't seen this film, it's definitely worth a look. If you don't like it, oh well, teach their own. But I think if you're not a fan of Adam Sandler, this will might surprise you. If you are a fan of Adam Sandler, it might surprise you as well. But yeah, it, it was fun to watch this again because. I haven't seen this in a while, and it's nice to know that it, it held up for me.
in case you're wondering that's the inside of it just in case and this shot is in the movie but there's him and the seven sisters and I guess a uh, certain kaleidoscope of images of the movie didn't even know about that until just now but yeah give it a look if you have never seen it I think there'd be some people that'd be very genuinely surprised it's a sweet love story and again a really good performance by Adam Sandler I would say as of right now my favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie definitely say that so thanks for watching take care and we'll see you guys later Bye-bye.